My next guest, finding opportunities outside mega cap tech, both domestically and abroad. Let's bring in Mohammed Anjawala. He is managing director at Advent Global Opportunities, which has $91 billion of assets under management. Mohammed, welcome. It's nice to see you. Thank you for having me, Scott. So how would you articulate your, your market view here as we close a quarter, best start to a year in five, and now we're wondering what happens next? Well, it's certainly been a, a, a great start uh, to the year for the market, but it's not just this, this year. I mean, last six months, the market's been really moving up. And I think as some of your prior guests talked about, it's a lot of that has been multiple. So multiples have expanded quite a bit. And in particular, around these so-called Magnificent Seven, the, the seven uh, mega cap tech names, um, our view is, and, and we're long-term investors, our view is that if you look for sustained earnings growth beneath the surface, beneath the largest tech names, um, there are actually some pockets of value that you can find. Give me some ideas where, because that's ultimately what investors want to do. If they're tired of look, either looking at the MAG7 or wondering whether there's going to be a, a continued rotation into other areas, where should we look? One of the areas we're spending a lot of time in is, is aerospace, and in particular, the aerospace supply chain. So not just the big names that folks are familiar with, Boeing and Airbus, but even deeper in the supply chain. And as this, that supply chain is ramping up production, and there's some challenges in getting new planes out. What that means is that the existing fleet of planes is getting older and working harder. And the implication is that uh, the need for uh, repairs, parts, maintenance is continuing to increase at a, at, a, at a sustained rate. And so companies that service that aftermarket uh, in, within the aerospace world are actually really well positioned in our view for sustained earnings growth for the next several years. Before I let you go, and, and I'm going to see you next week, by the way, at the Iris Zone Conference, which I'll get to in a moment, um, you really are the epitome of the American dream. When I, when I read through your notes, and I did not want that part of your story to be overlooked and simply just sitting here talking about X's and O's and stocks and the, the market at large. You came to this country at 17 years old. You had two suitcases and $200 in your pocket. You had a full scholarship to Franklin and Marshall. Um, it's remarkable. How, how did you get to where, from there to where you are today? Uh, I'm in the land of opportunity. <laughs> I've been very, very lucky and, uh, you know, life takes you in, in different directions. And one of the critical sort of points in my life was coming to the U.S. And, and just the opportunities I've had here, the mentors I've had here, and the learnings I've had here has allowed, you know, for me to get to where I did. So uh, I'm, I am, as you say, living the American dream. Did you always know that this is what you wanted to do? You, you just needed to come here, get the education you did, and then you'd figure out a way to get to Wall Street, so to speak, in, in finance? <laughs> no, I, I can't say that. I, I, you know, when you're 17, you really don't know much. Uh, but I think that's the, that's the beauty of it, right? I mean, in, in, the, in America, I've had the chance to just see a lot more things and and realize that there are a lot more career opportunities that were possible than might have been uh, back home in Pakistan. Yeah. As I said, we'll see you next week. We'll make sure we shake hands over the Irish Zone Conference. I look forward to that. Well, I'm going to be okay, to your point about how many things have had to go right, I mean, yeah. I think the one of the m most remarkable things is what could actually go wrong, and we've still managed to be where yes. we are. Tech could stumble. Well, could go wrong, yeah. And, and, and we were able to right. withstand that. Uh, the Fed, right, we were, with able, we were able to withstand going from seven to th three. Yes. And here we are. We're going to have another record close. That's right. No, and it's because the, the, the confidence in the macro picture underwrites the whole story. And if, you're, if you are confident about that, and if you do believe that the stocks that have been left behind last year were unduly cheap, or at least not priced for a good earnings path over a couple of years, I do think that's important to keep in mind. It's not just like, oh, we'll have a couple of quarters of mean reversion, higher earnings. It's probably got to continue for a while. But yeah, it's been impressive. Um, it, it, you know, I think it's natural to sort of get a little bit itchy and say, we're due for some kind of adverse surprise. Yeah. But how can, you not, not, how can you not think not that, right? Handicap. Yeah, it's hard to help yourself but but uh help I mean, us sentiment think that. is definitely getting a little bit stretched all the rest of it but there's no smoking let's we'll see where the technicals are going jonathan krinsky btig joining us now how are we looking as we head into a new quarter hey scott good to see you um 
You know, look, I think the biggest risk as we head into April for us is the momentum factor unwind. And that doesn't necessarily mean market negative, but I think when you look at that momentum factor, depending on what you look at, um, we're coming off the best quarter in at least the last 20 years, meaning the stocks that have been going up have been going up extremely strongly, and the stocks that have not been doing well um, have not done well. And so, you know, if you want to kind of break that down to potential areas we think could um, have opportunity into April, on the high momentum side would be the semiconductors, which, you know, the semis are coming off their best five-month return since the year of 2000. And interestingly enough, April is actually a pretty weak month for semis. It's been down eight of the last 10 years in April. So I think you have stretched positioning and semis into a seasonally weak period. Um, so that's, I think, the biggest downside risk. And then the opportunity, we think, is an area like utilities, which are oh, just yeah. okay. now starting to break out of a of a 18-month downtrend, um, breaking some horizontal resistance to the upside. And interestingly enough, April is actually very strong for utilities. Um, they've been up uh, pretty strongly, on average, about 2% over the last 10 years. Um, up 80% of the time. So it's one of the best sectors in April. So we think those are two ways you can kind of play um, both sides of the market. And, you know, we'll see how that shakes out for the overall team. That was Cameron Dawson's pick, too, uh, for a contrarian play with utilities. Jonathan, thanks. We'll see you soon. BTIG. We're going to turn to you. So yesterday we had a new record close yeah. for the S&P. We're going to get one for the Dow. Uh, well, we we'll today, the S&P, too, it looks if, like. Yeah, well, for, certainly for the S&P. We're extending that. Yeah. But now the Dow's joining the party. Yeah. And we're a little more than 100 points away now from Dow 40K. Yeah. Um, I mean, the S&P, this would be the 22nd new record high in the first quarter. Um, if you annualize that, I think that's the best year ever in terms of number of record highs. So that, again, shows you that this market has run ahead and taken credit for a lot of good stuff. But it is based on, like we were saying, um, many of the things we were so worried about back in September and October really not coming true and reversing that huge risk aversion that we uh, that we did see there. The stuff to watch that I'm watching that you can't really tell when it's going to run out is um, a lot of the retail investor speculative action that has started to flow again and whether that destabilizes parts of the market. I don't think it's make or break, but you also at the same time have this very, very active and growing area of just selling options to, to harvest the income. In other words, to bet on continued low volatility. So everyone says, well, when the market's this broad, it never just tops. No, it doesn't top for good. But we had a really broad rally into the beginning of 2018. And that's when you got Balmageddon. So I don't think we have the makings of it right now in the same way. But those are the things that ride along with a bull market uh, and, and are part and parcel of it. But when they get to an extreme, they can be destabilizing. And what Krinsky was saying about the momentum reversal, it's not necessarily market negative unless it knocks something loose in terms of, you know, the, the cross asset pricing. And, you know, we're selling everything because our leading stocks went down and we have to raise cash. That's not happening right now. Dow's uh, 60 or so points uh, ahead of a, a new closing high. So it looks like we're going to notch that on this final day of uh, an amazing quarter. S&P right, is going to extend take a look its and see. Finally, you know, like yesterday when we did the recording, it was in the middle of the day, so we didn't have the closing prices of the indices. Uh, we're now looking at the Dow. You can see it, it was a closed up 0.12%. NASDAQ closed down 0.12. S&P 500 up 0.11. And the Russell 2000 was up 0.31%. And on the heat, heat map here, you can see Meta and Apple were down. Tesla was down for the day on, fr on Thursday. But for the week, let's take a look and see how the week uh, looked. Yeah, Microsoft, NVIDIA down, Meta down. Google was up and Amazon was up. You can see Intel and uh, Micron Technology did really well. It was up 7.32%. Merck was up 6.74%. Uh, some, some of the names. Disney was up 4.85%. And why don't we just take a quick look at the monthly chart. I'm sorry, the monthly performance as well. So this is for the whole month now. NVIDIA up 16.34%. Google up 10.79%. Apple was down 5.48, Amazon up 4.17, Tesla down 12.99%. And uh, so not good. Adobe was down also 8.56. So let's now take a look at the charts. And we're going to just take a quick look at the Russell 2000 because it, like I mentioned uh, before, we really wanted to wait until the end of the week to, to have a sense of what it's going to look like for next week. And I want you guys to pay close attention to something. So I'm just, I circled this uh, specific doji. Um, 
because this candle here is typically, you know, you're going to find a, this is a pivot candle. What that means is there's now a level that needs to be broken and where price needs to close above it. The high of this candle is 210.41. At the end of the day on Thursday, all right, and this was the end of the week because we didn't have a market that was open today, um, it did not close above that level of 210.41. In fact, it closed at 210.30. So, I, you know, it would have been great if, if we had that. It did not occur. Let's look at the daily chart as well. See what happened here? It developed a gravestone pattern. That's a bearish pattern. It's a reversal candle. Not a good thing. Not, not what we want to be seeing. Um, and then if we switch it down to even, say, a 10-minute chart, you can see what happened, transpired here. It did drop, right? It dropped actually uh, at around you know noon on Thursday. Price started declining, and we had a cross of the Tenkinson under the Kijinson. So maybe this is just a short pullback. You know, this it's a long weekend uh, with the holiday and everything, and so you know people sometimes like to put their their uh, their investments in cash temporarily, just in case there's some. You know, they knew there was some going to be coming out that news that was going to be coming out um, that I just showed you. So we'll see how the market reacts to it. But now, in a sense, uh, we have to wait. <laughs> we have to wait because it did not. We didn't get a close on the weekly chart of the Rus on the Russell 2000. We have to wait one more week. We need a closing price on the weekly chart above this candle, the 210.41. And uh, that will signify the, I, I believe, it will be more conclusive. Uh, as bullish as this candle here was, it did retrace a little bit on Thursday. And I don't like that. I would have liked to have seen a, a full body candle like this with no wick on the top. Because the wicks typically signify um, bear bears coming in and pushing the price down. You don't want that. Okay, now let's get into the stocks. We're going to start off with Apple. It was down 1.06% on Thursday, and uh, it's inside the cloud on the weekly chart. It's uh, coming close to a support level of 165.61. Not a stock I'd be interested in entering a new long position in. If you're holding it as a long-term uh, investor, you're not wrong on this unless it closes under. We get a closing price on a weekly chart under 165.61. That would be this low right here because then it would really materialize this double pattern, double top pattern that you see here, this high here, this high. That's a negative pattern. We don't want that. And so um, that's why this is such a significant level, 165.61. That's what I'd be watching. If you get a closing price under it and it gets under the cloud as well, then you're in a lot of trouble. Okay. Amazon is doing very well. It's str a very strong chart. It was up 0.31% on Thursday, and um, it looks like it's still moving in a very positive direction on the weekly. How about American Express? Same thing with American Express. It was down 0.03% on Thursday. Not a big deal. Uh, let's look at Bitcoin ETF, B-I-T-O. This one did really well uh, for the week. You can see that it actually gapped up from this closing price, it gapped up to that level, about 5.75% on Monday over the weekend there, and then it continued to move past this high level. So it looks like it uh, is continuing. Let's look at the daily chart. You know, there's that candle that broke above the Tenkinson, but now it's just kind of like moving sideways a little bit. All right, and here's the Bitcoin USD, which tells us what the price of Bitcoin is. It's at $69,655 right now. Um, Caterpillar was brought up in the interview there and this stock has been doing really well this was uh, it was up 0.49 percent on thursday i like what i'm seeing here it, it looks like it closed above these highs right there so that's very bullish love that and on the weekly chart very strong let's see here ceg is constellation energy now it has done really well okay but we are getting a reversal candle this is called an inverse hammer um, this is what it looks like. Just want to show you a shooting star, they call it also, right? So a shooting star, a long wick and a small body. Uh, long wick on the top. That means that the, the sellers came in, they pushed the price down, 
And so after a move up, that tends to be a uh, the potential for a new drop. And you can see here, if you guys want to take a screenshot of this, you're welcome to. This is the candle pattern reference sheet. You can see single candle patterns, right? Here's a hammer. There's the introverted hammer there. Here's a dragonfly, a bullish spinning top. You can see all these different interesting things. There's You've probably heard me talk about the uh, harami, a bullish harami or a negative harami. Um, if you want to understand, for those of you that are new and want to understand what the candlesticks mean, you can take a look at this right here, understanding candles. And if you have a bullish candle, it means that the, op so when you see this, it's the opening price. Let's say it's a daily chart, a daily candle. This is the price where the, um, where the price opened at 9.30 a.m. right here. And this is where it closed at the end of the day. What the wick signifies is how far down did it go throughout the day, okay? So the, the sellers might have pushed it here in the beginning of the day, and then the buyers came in, brought it up to this high, and then it finally closed at this level at 4 p.m. The alternative here, when you have a negative candle, it's opening price here at 9.30 a.m. Let's say that the buyers came in, pushed it up, but then the sellers came back, pushed it, pushed it, pushed it all the way down to this level. But then before the close of the day, they pushed, the buyers came in, pushed it, and they brought it to this level. That's 4 p.m. This is, so that's what that signifies, the body and the wick. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, there's just a lot of patterns here. So you can, you guys can check them out. And there's a lot of information on, on, on the web, obviously, um, on candlestick patterns. I strongly recommend that you learn them because they can make a big difference in your trading. You can be, it can help you out of situations like this where I would never enter a long position on this, on this negative candle, okay? Because there's a higher probability that this price, the price next week will drop for this stock. Doesn't mean it's guaranteed, but there's a higher probability. There's also some negative operating cash flow here. So that's another reason I wouldn't be entering that specific one. It's a negative $5.4 billion operating cash flow. Not good. Here's another comp uh, company that was just showed on, I think it was showed in, uh, in on the charts there when they were you know, talking about different companies. Da DoorDash. The ticker symbol is Dash, D-A-S-H. Not a company, even though the technicals look really good. As you can see here on the weekly chart, and they look great on the daily chart as well. You want to have confirmation with the fundamentals, and you can see the profit margin is negative, 6.46. Um, the EBITDA is negative. What is EBITDA? It's the operating income before depreciation. And you guys can look that up too online. Very important to know. But their sales growth is very strong, so maybe that's what's pushing this uh, up so much. Gold, the gold ETF did really well, did really well this last week. It actually, you can see here, this was the price back on Wednesday, March 27th. It gapped up on early in the morning uh, on on um, on Monday, okay? Uh, I'm sorry, this was Thursday's candle here. On Thursday morning, it gapped up from the prior day and continued moving up you can see that it has broken this high right here so that's very positive and this um this candle right here as well so you know this would be uh, the pivot candle actually right there you can see it never closed above it here stayed under there but then finally popped my expectation is that gold is going to do really well in uh, the next uh next couple of weeks you can see the this is the weekly chart as well uh, look how strong the momentum adx indicator looks right here with gold by the way gold is also if you're a little bit hesitant to be in the markets or maybe you want to have a little bit of a hedge right because uh, you have this expectation that there's going to be a downturn in the market in the in the near future this is not a bad place to um, invest in because if that does occur, when there's fear in the markets, people tend to invest in gold, okay? All right, let's go to the next one, Google. This is the weekly chart, looking strong. It was up just 0.04%, but you can see it is uh, 
it's uh, in a very strong uptrend on the weekly chart. It is coming close to a level of resistance, 153.98. I'd hold off on this one until we close above this level. All right, Russell 2000, we talked about that one. And um, Meta has been experiencing new highs. It was down 1.68% here, as you can see. Um, I don't I don't see anything too negative about this. It's, it's holding up above the top of this uh, candle. So um, overall, I like what I'm seeing on the weekly. Let's look at the daily, though. On the daily, we have a different picture. So if you're a shorter term uh, trader, like as far, you're a more active trader, is what I meant to say, uh, then you may want to consider uh, reducing your position or look at this low here. Do you see this this candle? The $476 level, if price closes under that level, you know, it could signify a continued downtrend and uh, it would probably come back down closer to the 453. Now, 453 level is about 7.16%. So that's why I'd be a little bit concerned, but you can see the volume here is also also increased a little bit on, th on uh, Thursday. Not a good thing for Meta. Um, but the ADX is still declining, so that's good. Okay, let's go to the next one, Merck. Merck popped on, you can see here, on Wednesday. That was on Wednesday, March 27th. Here's Thursday's candle. Um, both negative candles. We have a doji, and we have a, eh, I guess you could call it a spinning top slash hammer. When it's at the top of a move, it's it's very bearish when it's, you know, after a move up. Uh, so I'd hold off. That's the daily chart. Let's look at the weekly. Weekly looks much better. If you're an investor and you're holding on to this, nothing wrong uh, with continuing that approach. Um, so let's keep going. So again, let me just repeat. If you are a long-term investor, focus more on the weekly charts. And if you are an active trader, then focus more on the daily charts um, because you're going to be more, you're going to have a lot more signals, basically, and, and you'll be coming in and out of the market a little bit more often. Microsoft um, down 0.17% on Thursday. It's holding below this 427.16 level. And uh, that's based on this candle here. So I'd wait for it to close above that. All right, let's go to the next one, NVIDIA on the weekly chart. You can see that we had a inverse hammer right there. And so when you have that type of candle, you need to clear it in order for this to be disqualified or to be um, to lose its, I guess you can say its power, right? Uh, you do need to, to basically close above it. We haven't had that happen. The high of that candle is $974. So let's fix that real quick. Make sure we have an exact amount. Okay. And notice how it stayed under that level. On the 15th, March 22nd, March 28th. This is a weekly chart. That's the level you want to watch out for. It could potentially drop. All right. So just pay very close attention to, to NVIDIA at this point. I don't like this candle at all. It's the first negative candle, weekly candle, that we've had in so many weeks, right? Look, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven weeks. We have a first negative candle. It's not a positive. It's a reversal candle. See the positive volume below here? And then we have the negative volume. I'm a little bit concerned. Let's look at the daily chart. On the daily chart, um, you see that it closed under the Tenkinson on Wednesday, March 27th, and stayed under it on Thursday, March 28th. Um, it doesn't mean that the, this trend is over. It just means watch out. It's a warning. That's all. Just be careful at this point. No, not a time to be entering a new long position until we have a new move above 974, in my opinion. Or... Alternative, alternatively, if price, um, for example, decided to, say, drop down to the Tenkinson, to down a little bit further, or down to the Kijinson, and then we get a bullish candle down over here in this region, right? That would make sense to re-enter. 
because this is still a very strong uptrend. It's expected to continue. Um, and so, yeah. Okay, let's keep going here. Tesla, this is not good, right? This is the weekly chart. Still under the Tenkinson, still under the Kijinson, still under the Ichimoku indicator. If you guys are unfamiliar with this indicator, uh, there is a video. What you know I'll do is I'll leave a link down below so that you can see the five minute tutorial on how this works, okay? All right, let's keep going. So I'd stay out of Tesla for the time being based on this weekly chart. Real estate ETF XLRE looking strong. We last week, the prior week, we you can see we had a spinning top here and this week it disqualified this candle and now it's broken above the high of that candle. So now my expectation is it's going to continue moving up um, and it will probably find some resistance here at 4075. But once we clear that area as well, hmm, there's a little bit more resistance above here. Let's see, where's that level? The high of that candle is 42.21. So that's what the charts are telling us right now. We have a higher high here than this high. We have a higher low here than this low. We have a textbook. Um, but what we don't actually have is a higher high here. Actually, I'd like to see that. See how it's stalled? I'd probably want to get above 4075 before I even consider this at this point. You know, I don't know. Anyway, that's my opinion. Okay, let's keep going. Uh, consumer discretionary. We, here's some more pivot candles. We broke through this one. Right here. It came back down, retested the Tenkinson, and then crossed above it again, and now it's continuing. I like what I'm seeing on the weekly chart with consumer discretionary. Um, on the daily chart, it was down 0.31%. I'd probably wait for a new bullish candle, uh, you know, before re-entering on this one. Okay, and if you guys like this software that I'm using here, it's called TC2000. There is a link down below where you can get a discount if you are a subscriber. In fact, one of the uh, types, uh, there's like a silver, there's a gold membership, and then there's also, uh, I think, a platinum. Uh, the silver, you can get that for free for two months with that um, discount if you haven't used TC2000 in the last year. So definitely check that out, and I will catch you. Oh, I always forget this. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you like this video and want to see more videos just like this one. And hope you guys have a great weekend. I will catch you in the next video.